Now when the human being is not careful, who takes advantage of him? The shaitan. The shaitan. And you know it is that shaitan who fed him that line that was used in the previous surah. What was the, what was the deception that most people fell victim to that Allah addressed? Allah Azza wa Jal told them, them, the people, وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ And He said, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ This is not the word of a, a cursed devil. He's not insane. But you know when, shay- when you let shaitan in, when you're not careful, then he'll feed even the worst lies against the truth to you. And you'll believe them. So these people fell into that trap. Here Allah says, مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ What deluded you? What conned you away from your gracious Lord? Now, Allah Azza wa Jal didn't even say, what deluded you from Allah? He didn't say that. مَا غَرَّكَ بِاللَّهِ No. مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ What deluded you from your Lord? The, the word Rabb necessarily illustrates a relationship. Illustrates a relationship. You know, the word Allah is, is لَفْضَ الْجَلَالَةِ this is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the proper name. Of course, it's argued that it's rooted in the word ilah. But the word rabb, rabb, to help you understand, it's a word of a, it, it necessarily denotes a relationship. For example, when you say teacher, what do you think of on the other side? Student. When you think of master, on one side, what do you think of on the other? Slave, servant. When Allah calls himself slave and doesn't even say master, he, said, he didn't say rabbi samawat wal ard, rabbi al What do you say here? Rabbi ka. Your Lord. To give you a simple parallel of what's going on in this text, you're about to be fired. Because you don't, you know, pay attention to the instructions of your boss. You don't, you show up to work three hours late, he, he tells you to do A, you do B, he tells you to do B, you do C, you don't pay attention. You're about to be fired. The boss comes to you and he doesn't want to be mean to you or anything. But he's curious, why are you so messed up? So the boss comes to you and says, so what was it? What was it that was distracting you from my instructions? You understand? We had a standing relationship, we had an agreement. وَقَدْ أَخَذَ مِثَاقَكُمْ The covenant was already taken, the promise had already been taken. You already made this promise to me that you'll be my slave. أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى Am I not your Lord? Am I not your Master? We said yes, of course. There wasn't any confusion. Then what was it that confused you from your job? What was the distraction? Now at your real you know, job in dunya, maybe it was YouTube or it was like, you know, Facebook or something. You were making calls to overseas or something at your job that deluded you. But in this context, Allah Azza wa Jal Ma gharraka bi rabbik al kareem It is the other things in this world that people are running towards and then because of them, they don't turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's beautiful here is they were turning away from the messenger in the previous surah. The people were turning away from Rasulullah wasallam in the previous surah. In the surah before that, they were turning away from the Qur'an. When Allah says, you know, فِي صُحُفٍ مُطَهَّرَ بِأَيْدِي سَفَرَ كِرَامٍ بَرَرَ They were turning away from the revelation itself. Here, they're turning away from who? Allah subhanahu They're Rabb. They've forgotten the, the root of the problem. Why are they turning away from the messenger? Why are they turning away from revelation? Because they have no concern that they have a master. That's why they're distracted by other things. Bi Rabbik. And then Allah didn't just say Rabbik, He said, Bi Rabbik al Kareem. Kareem, noble, gracious. When we talked about this, when the teacher is nice and he's noble, what does the student do? Starts taking advantage and starts getting deluded into think, conning himself into thinking that they can get away with whatever. Because he's a nice, come on, he's so Kareem. Out of his nobility, out of his grace, he's not gonna punish. And when that noble teacher, that graceful teacher, before he hands you your F and he calls you and he says, listen, I was nice to you all along. Why did you do this? You will feel far worse with that teacher than the teacher who was mean to you because he'll feel, he'll say, I was expecting him to fail me anyway. You know, I don't feel that bad because he's not a nice guy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is failing these people. He's failing and he's asking them in such a loving, introspective fashion. They have to look in deep inside of themselves when he says, مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ What was it? What was, was it the love of money? Was it your family? Was it the love of your own pathetic desires? Was it the love of wasting time? What was it that took you away from, from your gracious Lord? He gave you so many, out of His grace, He gave you so many things. And one of the things here, the use of the word kareem, Allah is kareem, and out of His karama, He gave karama to the human being. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam, we, we honored the human being. And so part of that honor is coming in the next ayah. How did Allah show His grace to you? الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ He's not just your Lord, 
Not just that he has that relationship over you that you're the slave. On top of this, Allah di khalaqaka, the one who created you, fasawaka. Then he, you know, sawa taswiya in Arabic has multiple meanings. One of them is to to equate and to fix everything up perfectly, but another is to actually tweak and to take to take care of the finest details and to make sure everything's just the way it's supposed to be. You know what image comes to mind because it's in the news a lot nowadays. You know all these car companies. Right, and they show these factories. They don't. They hopefully they don't let the car out of the lot until they check the brakes and they check everything. They tweak, they tweak. Allah speaks about the tweaking of the human being. He created you. Didn't just create you. He fine tuned you. Taswiya, fasawaka, and then finally faadalak. He balanced you. Now this word is very powerful. Adil. He balanced you in that you know we're we're a balanced creature. We walk on two feet. We we have balance. You know our ears actually are, are a big place of our balance. When there's fluid in our ears, we get dizzy and stuff. Right, so this is a place of balance. But even in the figurative sense, he balanced us. You know, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَهَا. There's a balance between those two things. Everywhere in the Quran, you find, you know, the, this discussion on guidance. You'll find a balance. He balanced our motives between running towards, the, you know, the paradise and running away from what? The hellfire. He balanced us. He balanced us between our personal obligations and our obligations to our family and the world at large. Personal obligations, collective obligations. It's a balance. He ba- so he, in so many ways he balanced you, and he gave you a sense of balance also. Fadalak. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions this in another place. He says, "Lakad khalaqna al-insan fi ahsani taqwim." Right? Surah so Tutin is coming up later on in the series. We, we created the human being in the best possible fashion, and what is that best possible fashion? Alladhi khalaqaka fasawaka fadalak. You know, and then at a personal level, how can there be a God? I didn't do anything wrong, and I lost my job. I didn't do anything wrong and I got cancer. Or my mother died, or this happened, or that happened. And people come to the, the church and they say, why is God doing this to me? This is a common thing. And you know, it's, unfortunately, it's now starting to happen among the Muslims. Why is Allah doing this to me? I had a brother come to the masjid not too long ago. You know, his mother had passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna May Allah enter her into the paradise. Right? But he came and he was distraught, apparently. And he said, why is Allah doing this to me? What, what's my fault in all of this? Right? And somebody gets sick. They say, why is Allah mad at me? Why is this happening to me? So first of all, understand some very basic things. Very, very basic things. When Allah said His name to us in the Fatiha, Alhamdulillah, the very next thing He told us about Himself is not Khaliq, is not Malik, is not Ar-Rahman, is not Ar-Rahim. What's the first thing He told us? Rabb. Rabb al Alami, Rabb. And the thing with, with Rububiya, Lordship, Ownership, Complete Rights Over Someone, is that when Allah is, if you truly accept that Allah is not just the Creator, He is Rabb, Rabb, He's your Lord, and you are, you are, you have no rights before Him. Then, a slave doesn't have any rights. Property doesn't have rights. My computer, if this is my recorder, it stops working. Do I have a right to break it, to step on it, to throw it away? Is it going to file a complaint against me? No, it's mine. I made it. Or if I, I bought it, it's my complete property. Now Allah not only created us, but owns us entirely, has rububiya over us. He's our Rabb. Did I, did I pay for my hands? Did I pay for my eyes? I didn't. Did I pay for the kind of face I want? Or even though some deviated people do that nowadays. But did I decide what gender I'm gonna be? Did I decide how old I'm gonna be? What ethnicity I'm gonna be? Who my mother and father are going to be? Was any of this in my control? No. Now, is Allah is the one who gave it to me. I didn't pay him anything for it. And if Allah didn't give it to me, was I entitled to it? I wasn't entitled to anything. I didn't pay for anything. It's all been given to me. So the idea of God owing me, which is very a very Christian concept nowadays at least, that God owes us somehow. Allah Azza wa Jal owes us nothing. Because He is what? Rabb. He's Rabb. He owes us nothing. He gives anyway. He's an amazing Rabb. He doesn't owe us, He still gives us. But when somebody is born, and you know, they, 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 they die as a child, or uh, there's death, and there's disease, and there's calamity, and all of these things, when they are there, and when they are not there, He is still our Rabb. He's still our Rabb. You can't, it's just like saying, why did He give me five fingers, why didn't He give me six? It's just like that. We have no control in these things, when you accept Allah as Rabb. He's, he's the Rabb, and we're the Abd. That's one of the central messages of the Qur'an. Because it cuts at the root of all your other questions. When you internalize this really deep, profound reality, you accept that I'm a slave. 
You walk as a slave. You live. You talk as a slave. You know, the, a free person and a slave, they have different attitudes. Right? The slave, every time he opens his mouth, who does he, what does he think? Is the master listening? Right? He's not going to open his mouth until... He's not going to do something. He's not going to eat something until... I wonder if he's watching. Right? Employees do that. They look at the security camera before they, you know, before they check their email. Or make sure that, you know, the network uh, spy software isn't on. <laughs> you know, before they browse the web. We're that scared of other forms of mastery. Imagine if you accept Allah's Rabb. Everything you say, every step you take, every breath, you know, everything you look at. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنُ مَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ Right? That's the attitude of accepting Allah Azza wa Jalla as Rabb. He is the one who created you in this profound fashion. You think He just left you like that without a purpose? When Allah Azza wa Jalla created us, He gave us these faculties, He balanced us. فَعَدَلَكْ Then He gave, necessarily demands from us a purpose. Kalla, But the, the, rather not at all. In other words, Allah's disappointment with humanity after this profound creation of the human being, after this amazingly balanced well fine-tuned human being has been fashioned so that he can show the rest of he could be the the best of all creation because he obeys Allah by choice no the reality is bal tukadhibuna bid din no you lie deliberately against the deen you lie deliberately against then the word deen is really interesting 